A biracial Korean Irish six-year-old boy living in extreme poverty in Korea is adopted by a Swedish family in the heartland of America. That's the true story of our next guest, Joel L.A. Peterson, in his book, Dreams of My Mothers. Welcome, Joel. You have a very interesting story about how this book came about. Can you share it with us? Well, the book is, um, it's called a uh, biographical fiction is the genre. So I used real elements from my life, and um, everybody has an interesting life to themselves. But you didn't start out to write a book, did you? No, you were... no. No, I had, uh, I had written just a little bit about my life when I was uh, a child in Korea for the benefit of my adoptive family so they could understand a little bit. Um, but then I was encouraged by uh, my childhood minister who had recently published a book when we were connected. He put me in touch with his uh, publisher and the publisher thought this had merit and, um, and thus the book came about. And uh, what did you feel? I mean, was this a cathartic experience to write about your, why a, a, a fictional biography? Well, as I was saying, all of us have interesting lives. Uh, very few of us have lives that are interesting to other people. Um, <laughs> uh, so one of the things is I thought uh, we all have mothers. And very few of us get to know our mothers as people. We tend to see them just as this institution that we call mom. Mm -hmm. And some people have, end up with uh, conflicted feelings about their mothers and their relationship because they're matching them against this incredible institution and, and the, the, the standards that that uh, carries. Um, and I wanted to create then a story about two women who are mothers who go on an extraordinary journey uh, of international adoption where one is giving up a child, one is gaining a child. And even though that's a rare event, inside it is all the deepest, most closely held human themes. Your, your mother gave you up for adoption at six years old. Now, I haven't read the book. Did, ha, have you gone back and actually met your mother? You don't know who your father is. Uh, are you still in touch with your mother, well, your both, biological mother? Both my mothers uh, have passed, um, so uh, another good reason why I had to wait a certain point to write a book. Um, but uh, I did go back and find my uh, birth mother uh, when I was 18, and that's uh, part of that story is also in the book. Uh, so it uh, it was a interesting journey. Well, was it hard to you know just just disconnect and have to go to this you know obviously foreign place and um, especially with the Midwest for a young Korean boy? It was an extraordinary, uh, difficult transaction um, and transition. Uh, and I was old enough to not only remember the adoption, but mm -hmm. then I was old enough to really understand what was going on. And um, you know, to go to a foreign country where you don't know anybody, you don't speak the language, and are racially different, um, you know, that was a very traumatic experience to go through. If, if I have one, yeah, one last question before we have to wrap up, because there is an element an, uh, of race and a discussion of, of race and racism in the book. Uh, if, if we've got 10, 15 seconds, can you just talk a little bit about, uh, about what that experience is like? Well, what I put in the book is the fact that uh, in America we continue to struggle with the identity of our society. And we continue to struggle with the issues of race and racism, culture, what family is. And certainly through my experience, uh, those were elements uh, that were brought to the fore. This book addresses them in a very clear-eyed way, but I think in a very positive and constructive way that adds to the dialogue that we are having in our society today about these topics. All right. Well, thank you, Joel L.A. Peterson. Once again, we want to let everybody know that the name of the book is Dreams of My Mothers, and it sounds fascinating. A story of love transcendent, right? It's available on Amazon.com and book store. It is definitely bookstore. on my uh, reading list, so thank you for that. Thanks for having me. Uh, don't go away when we come back. Some senior facilities treat older adults with dementia like children when it comes to activities. Mary Winters will tell us about the best activities to keep seniors engaged in her Senior Solutions segment, and that is coming up next.